So, uh, yeah, welcome everybody to the Friday morning session of the Nankai Symposium on Mathematical Dialogues. Uh, and the first talk this morning is from Xiongju Li. He's going to be telling us about uh, light towers of states at infinite distances. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I'd first like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation to speak. Um, today I'll be telling you about light towers of states at infinite distances indeed. So the talk will base mainly on these three papers um, in collaboration with Daniel Klau and Timo Weigert uh, at Hamburg, uh, Max Fisner at IFT Madrid, and Wolfgang Lehe at CERN. Um, while the audience of this workshop is going to be rather mixed, uh, my, my understanding is that we may still dialogue in our common language, which I believe is the mathematics. So I'll try to um, uh, put things in a rather mathematical context, but please do stop me if I uh, uh, end up using too many physics jargons without explaining them uh, carefully. Um, okay, so the story starts from string theory and its effective field theories. String theory is a 10 dimensional theoretical framework that incorporates quantum gravity at high energies, which is notoriously difficult to achieve in a conventional quantum field theory framework. Uh, with string theory as a high energy framework, we could then describe low energy physics uh, in lower dimensions by decomposing the 10 dimensional space time into a non compact and uh, a compact manifold of complementary dimensions. This is what is known as string compactification. The corresponding low energy theory is in fact a quantum field theory, and we call it uh, an effective field theory or an EFT for short. Naturally, an EFT of string theory is determined by the geometry of the uh, compact uh, internal space. <clears throat> uh, moreover, uh, uh, by construction, such a string EFT is consistent with quantum gravity at high energies. Uh, now, string theory is almost uniquely defined at high energies, um, as represented here uh, by a single point in the theory space at high energies. <clears throat> this indicates how, how, how non-trivial it is to describe quantum gravity. However, string dynamics turns out to allow for a huge number of topologically distinct compact manifolds, and therefore a plethora of uh, uh, string effective field theories arise at low energies. And that huge set is known as uh, the string landscape. So that's about the landscape. Uh, once again, by construction, every string EFT in the landscape has a high energy completion uh, into quantum gravity. On the other hand, as it turns out, there exists lots of apparently consistent uh, low energy theories, which nevertheless cannot be completed into quantum gravity. Uh, the set of such incomplete theories is known as the swampland. Uh, this division is rather well defined, but it would not be useful uh, if we could not come up with concrete practical criteria by which theories in the landscape can be distinguished from those in the swampland. Um, in this context, quantum gravity conjectures is a general term that refers to any consistence constraints uh, uh, that quantum gravity is believed to impose on general grounds. However, there are, uh, well, yeah, well, th these, these, these consistency constraints are all uh, conjectures rather than theorems. So some of them are widely accepted by the community, but not all of them. So modulo this subtlety, for a given low energy theory, we can test uh, if the theory obeys the constraints, and if it fails any of them, we may dump it into the swampland. And determining such consistency constraints and uncovering along the way the very nature of quantum gravity is going to be the major goal of the so-called swampland program. Um, the set of quantum gravity conjectures has been expanding very fast, and this is a partial subset. Of course, it is not the aim of this talk to discuss all of this. Instead, uh, I will just point out here that they are closely connected. 
forming an intricate web structure. And arguably, at the heart of this web is the so-called distance conjecture, on which we will focus uh, in this tool. And in addressing this famous conjecture, we will invoke the emergent string conjecture as its refinement. Uh, specifically, the goal of this talk is then uh, to address these two conjectures for whole classes of string EFTs by revealing certain universal properties of the compactification geometries. So firstly, what is the distance conjecture? Uh, let's imagine a low energy gravity theory with a scalar field and consider traversing an infinite distance in moduli space. In physics terms, we are deforming the theory very much towards the, the boundary of the uh, EFT parameter space. <clears throat> uh, then the claim is that an infinite tower of states should become light uh, as such infinities uh, in this exponential fashion. And the alpha here, uh, uh, the exponent, is conjectured to be an order one constant. This statement has indeed been confirmed in uh, very many uh, string effective field theories, but uh, it still remains a conjecture. Uh, in order to physically better understand the conjecture and also to mathematically establish its foundations, it is then very important to, to uncover the physics origin of the light tower via uh, characteristic features of the compactification geometry at infinities. And along this line, the emergent string conjecture has been put forward. This says that at infinities in moduli space, uh, the theory either decompactifies or reduces to uh, a weakly coupled string theory. Uh, if true, this would serve as a refinement of the distance conjecture. After all, uh, the decompactification uh, will lead to a light Kaluza-Klein tower and a uh, weakly coupled string involves a light string excitation tower. Evidence has been piling up of the emergent string conjecture. Uh, well, you might consider the uh, decompactification phenomenon, the first case here, as a rather a boring case, but what may still be striking to you, I think, is that a unique uh, critical uh, tensional string emerges via the universal behavior of the compactification geometry at infinities. In particular, uh, this last work uh, has verified the conjecture in the Keller moduli space of a general four dimensional F theory, which is a least supersymmetric setup for a uh, genuinely gravitational uh, theory. Therefore, uh, this is expected to exhibit uh, uh, most general features as far as supersymmetric string EFTs are concerned. So I will begin by reporting on our analysis of infinities in Keller moduli of 4 the F theory. That will be uh, my part one. And then in part two, I will uh, switch to uh, more recent results on the, the brain moduli of eight dimensional F theory. And in both of these setups, uh, uh, we will have confirmed that a light tower as predicted by the distance conjecture uh, does arise first of all, and also that it has the physical origin as described by the emergent string conjecture. So that's going to be the rough plan. Uh, unless there are questions so far, um, I'd now like to start looking into uh, infinities in Keller moduli space uh, of a general four dimensional F theory. But uh, before we even start, here is the main message of part one. As I said, the physics arena is the uh, four-dimensional F-theory, which is described uh, mathematically by the, the geometry of an elliptic uh, uh, Calabi-Yau fourfold. Um, in this setting, our main geometric claim uh, is that at infinities in Keller moduli space of the base threefold, uh, we have either a a certain holomorphic curve shrink or otherwise some holomorphic uh, uh, cycles expand. Then physically, in the first case, uh, 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 we, we claim that a light tower arises via excitations of the unique 
a solitonic uh, uh, and critical tensionless string. And in the second case, a light uh, Kaluza Klein tower arises. So uh, let's now really get started. Uh, four dimensional F theory uh, is another name for type 2B string theory on a compact six dimensional internal space, X6, with uh, seven brains wrapping its four cycle, S. And this is where the external four dimensional gauge fields arise. These brains uh, also source a non trivial axial dilaton profile. Uh, which can be described via an, an elliptic vibration uh, uh, over the internal space X6. Uh, however, for a clearer intuition, uh, uh, in part one at least, I will mostly use the type 2B language. Uh, uh, so I won't actually talk much about elliptic vibrations, at least in part one. <clears throat> Let me also point out that everything is in fact complex geometry, uh, although I will often use the language of real geometry uh, only just to make the real dimension counting simpler. And I hope that this is not going to cause any confusions to any of you. Okay, so it turns out that the strengths of the forces in the EFT are governed by uh, certain internal volumes. Importantly, the, the gravity strength uh, or the Planck mass is given uh, uh, by the, the entire X6 volume. And also the, the gauge coupling, the, the gauge, gauge, gauge force strength is fixed by the volume of the four cycle wrapped by seven brains. But we won't be focusing on the gauge coupling in this talk. In any case, depending on where we are sitting in the Kala moduli space, various internal volumes vary, and so does the effective physics. Specifically, we can expand the Kala form, the Kali J here into the Kala con generators. And the associated uh, Keller parameters, tau i's here, are the two cycle volumes. And their squares are four cycle volumes. And their tube is going to be the x6 volume, roughly. OK. Now we'd like to classify the physics at infinities of this tau i space. And to this end, we will first study uh, what happens in, in, in geometry at infinities and then we will address its consequences in physics. In order to approach infinities, we need to send one or more of these tau parameters to infinity. Uh, and generically, the volume of X will then diverge in such a limit. But we can factor out the infinity, the overall infinity, through a large parameter, the red mu here. And for this purpose, uh, we define a rescaled Keller form denoted by the bold J uh, uh, here. Uh, then the rescaled X volume uh, measured with respect to this bold J uh, is going to be of order one by construction. Now I will denote by TIs the rescaled uh, Keller parameters appearing in, in the bold J, the rescaled Keller form. Then the simple situation occurs when all the rescaled Keller parameters TIs take order one values. This describes a homogeneous decompactification via the overall uh, mu scaling. Of course, a light Kaluza Klein tower emerges of which scale is computed as uh, mu to the minus four uh, with respect to the uh, Planck scale. Uh, by the way, I should say that uh, what I mean by tilde symbols here and there is that the two quantities in comparison have the same parametric order in the limit. Uh, in the sense that their ratio converges to a finite non-zero value. So this is a, a mathematically well-defined notion, I would say. Now, in general, this overall scaling can coexist with a, a relative scaling. Uh, this letter, uh, relative scaling happens when some of the rescaled Keller parameters are also large, the TIs. So this is, in a sense, a residual infinity. And importantly, this should also involve small TIs as well, uh, because the rescaled X volume has to be of order one. Therefore, we necessarily have some shrinking two cycles. Uh, and this will later play a very, very important role for physics. So we will now uh, turn to the properties of such a shrinking two cycle. So as it turns out, there arise three qualitatively distinct uh, classes. 
of infinite distance limits in the Keller moduli space. Uh, limits of class one and class two are respectively where this shrinking two cycle uh, is a rational fiber and an elliptic fiber. <clears throat> and uh, I emphasize that this shrinking fiber has to be the uh, uh, unique uh, two cycle that shrinks at a fastest rate. So what do I mean by this? Uh, in general, there can be uh, several two cycles that simultaneously shrink in the limit. However, uh, as far as the parametric rate is concerned, the fastest shrinking one has to be unique in order for the limit to, to belong to one of these two classes, class one and class two. And we call such a unique curve C0. Uh, and then all other limits are going to be placed in class three. And an obvious example uh, for class three is uh, the limit where two rational curves of an equal volume shrink simultaneously uh, with all other curves kept parametrically larger, uh, whether they are shrinking or not. And this situation can be easily engineered, I should say. Uh, for example, when x6 is p1 times p1 times p1, we can easily engineer such a situation. But also, uh, this can happen in many other topology types. And all such limits would then uh, fall into class 3. So having summarized our classification results in, in, in words, let me now delve into a bit of details. So recall that we rescale the, the, the Keller from curly J to, to bold J by factoring out the overall scaling factor mu. After that, we also considered a potential a relative scaling uh, for which we need another large parameter, which I will call a lambda in blue. Uh, and this will describe such a residual scaling within bold J. And uh, by carefully analyzing finite volume infinite distance limits, uh, we learned that the bold J should take either of these two forms. Uh, here, uh, the A parameters uh, um, are finite, and the, the B parameters and the Cs are at best order lambda. So they can be infinite, but they can also be finite or uh, go going to zero. Um, Note that uh, uh, the, the Calicon generators are here grouped into four subsets via their uh, 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 intersection properties. But I didn't mean to uh, bother you here with, with too many details. All I wanted to emphasize here is that the parametric form of the Keller parameters are, uh, in fact, very explicitly uh, uh, fixed uh, in terms of the two large parameters, uh, mu and lambda. <clears throat> so. With this, uh, 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 we can now quantitatively analyze the geometry. And uh, in particular, uh, for class one and class two limits, we end up with these parametric volume behaviors. Uh, these are the volumes of the, the cycles relevant to our story. And these include the smallest two cycle, the C0, the smallest four cycle, the, the largest four cycle, and the entire six dimensional internal space X6. So uh, that is about uh, geometry. And let me now move to uh, the physics, uh, uh, starting from class one. OK, so the shrinking curve C0 uh, can be wrapped by the D3 brain present in the type 2B string theory. And this way, we obtain an effective string in the external four-dimensional EFT. Uh, then because the curve C0 is rational, Due to the precise topological configuration, the resulting four-dimensional string turns out to be uh, a, a critical heterotic string. Now, the string tension is given by the C0 volume, uh, which is computed as 1 over mu square lambda square in Planck limit. And this string scale should then be compared with the Kaluza-Klein scale, which is governed by the largest cycle uh, present in the geometry. And this turns out to be uh, one over mu to the fourth lambda. <clears throat> so uh, within class one, there can arise these three distinct situations depending on where we are sitting in the mu lambda space. In other words, depending on how we are approaching the infinities in the Keller moduli space. So firstly, in this first regime, we have the, the string scale parametrically a uh, sorry, uh, the bigger than the, the KK scale. 
And this indicates a decompactification, of course. Uh, next, in the second regime here, uh, we have the, the string scale now parametrically locked with the KK scale. And this is the typical situation, in fact, which we are familiar with uh, in string compactifications. The size of the internal space tends to be bigger than the string length, but not parametrically bigger. And unlike in the first regime, the low energy theory uh, does not decompactify. And although we started from type 2B frame, the relevant fundamental string is now the emergent heterotic string because uh, this string is much lighter than the type 2B string. Finally, in this third regime, uh, the string scale is now uh, sitting parametrically below the KK scale. And this indicates that it is uh, a weakly coupled critical string theory that is genuinely four dimensional. Uh, however, this is not expected on general grounds and is rather pathological. And in the end, the day, the, the, the day is saved by, by quantum corrections. By, 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 by carefully going through quantum analysis, we can learn that such pathological regime is in fact obstructed by quantum corrections, while the first two regimes are only mildly affected by quantum corrections. But to, uh, today I won't be detailing this quantum story uh, and we'll just move to the uh, uh, other class. Okay, so enough about the class one limits. In a similar vein, we can also characterize the second class. Uh, here, the only difference is that the shrinking two cycle is now an elliptic curve rather than a rational curve. And this leads to an emergent type two string rather than uh, a heterotic string. But the physics goes really the same way. So I won't uh, say too much about uh, this class two limits. And uh, finally, class three, uh, collects all other infinities, as I said. So just to report the results of our lengthy analysis uh, for limits of class three, we eventually learn this fact. So uh, in class three, uh, the KK modes always serve as the leading tower, and this implies a decompactification. Um, so a simplest example would be the homogeneous decompactification to full 10 dimensions. And in this case, no relative scaling exists. Uh, so it's just, um, just uh, overall scaling. And a more involved example is uh, uh, the, the kind of limits which I discussed uh, where, where several two cycles uh, shrink just together at the same fastest rate. And naively, uh, this may also look pathological because uh, it would lead to several critical string species, not just one. However, uh, uh, as I asserted, the KK scale always uh, wins against any string scale in such a situation. So it is in fact uh, a decompactification in disguise. Okay, to summarize part one, um, we have confirmed that at infinities of Keller moduli, the four dimensional F theory either decompactifies or reduces to a weakly coupled string theory. And this leads to a light tower of either kaluza klein modes or string excitations, respectively. <laughs> okay, so having established- so, so Can a... I ask a quick, quick question? Yes, yes, please, yes, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so this case, which you called pathological. Yes. Uh, so just to connect it to what you said earlier, is that therefore in the swampland or not? So I would say that uh, this, this regime in the moduli space is actually not uh, reachable due to the corrections. Uh, and, and is it an inconsistency in the effective field theory or? Oh, so what I said by being pathological is that just that, you know, the, uh, for, the, for the weakly coupled critical string theory, we know that it should be defined in 10 dimensions. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, if KK, KK modes are completely decoupled, then this cannot exist. This should not be able to exist as a weakly coupled string theory because it's in four dimensions genuinely. So what I mean by pathological is this. But it, but does it show up in the effective field theory itself or? So what I'm claiming is that this this cannot be reached because of the quantum obstruction. So you cannot go there. Yeah. So you may naively think that this is reachable at infinite distance, but actually something should happen along the way. Okay. Thank you. So the, yeah. Can, Thanks can, for I ask, question. can I ask a related yes, question? 
Yes, please. Yes, please. Hi. Hi, Sanju. Um, so this this class of the curve C naught. Yes. Uh, that will very often and quite typically have a, a number of curves in it, which all shrink with the same rate. So is isn't getting multiple critical strings say the typical case? Okay, so um, I think if it's a fiber of a curve vibration, I think there is only one 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 curve. I think right. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it turns out that in class one and two, it should be either a rational fiber or a elliptic fiber. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no further questions about part one, I will now uh, move to part two. Um, okay. All right. So now. Uh, Having discussed a bit about Keller moduli in four dimensions, let me now move to uh, the brain moduli, but now in eight dimensions for a simple setup, still in F theory. So once again, let me start by shouting out the main message of part two. The physics arena is, as I said, an eight dimensional F theory of which mathematical description is given in terms of an elliptically fibered K3 surface. So the moduli in scrutiny is the brain moduli, as I said, and this amounts to the complex structure moduli from the uh, uh, total space K3 point of view. Then our claim from the geometry side is that uh, at infinities, either of these two situations, uh, uh, only of these two situations can happen. Uh, A, the Lie algebra associated with the monodromy around the degeneration locus extends to an affine or a loop algebra. Or case B, uh, the, the fibral elliptic J function at a generic location should diverge. And the consequences in physics are going to be the following. In the first situation, uh, uh, a, a light winding tower uh, arises associated with the imaginary root of the loop extension. And in the second situation, uh, a light string excitation tower should arise uh, as the theory enters a weakly coupled phase. So in the uh, rest of the talk, I will, I will address this feature uh, at infinities uh, of the brain moduli space. So the internal compact space for an eight dimensional F theory is a rational curve and the seven brain configuration is described as a set of uh, points therein. The Dilaton, Dilaton profile is again specified via an elliptic vibration of which total space is, as I said, a K3 surface. So the K3 complex structure moduli uh, uh, do contain the string coupling information because it acts a Dilaton, but they are essentially the brain moduli. This is because the, the brains are placed at the, at the point in the base P1 where the elliptic fibers degenerate. And of course, such degeneration loci are determined by the K3 complex structure. <clears throat> uh, mathematically, infinities for such brain moduli are classified by the so-called Kulikov models. But then for physicists, the immediate question arises as to uh, if we can find a light tower at all, and if we can gain some physics intuitions about that. And already in this simple eight dimensional setup, an interesting physical picture emerges. And uh, in a sense, this is a, a repetition of the previous uh, main message uh, slide, but let me still uh, restate our proposal. So the proposal goes as follows. At infinities in the uh, K3 complex structure moduli space, the elliptic K3s, the eight dimensional F theory either leads to an enhancement of the, the gauge algebra G, which is a Lie algebra, to a loop algebra G hat or reduces to a weakly, weakly coupled phase, uh, which is an emergent string phase. So the enhancement in the former case uh, is due to some extra seven brains coming close to the set of existing seven brains for, for the gauge algebra G. And we claim that uh, uh, this leads to um, effective decompactification either to nine or 10 dimensions. And as for the uh, uh, weak coupling uh, case, uh, some of you may be uh, uh, very familiar with the famous Sen limits, which turn the non-perturbative F theory to the weakly coupled perturbative type 2B string theory. And what I think is a noble finding is that uh, 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 this weak coupling phases can be much more general than 
the ones described by the, the sentiments. However, this is essentially uh, about di di directly tuning uh, the dilaton and does not really correspond to the brain moduli. So uh, uh, for the spirit of this talk, uh, uh, we will focus exclusively on this uh, formal situation uh, uh, in the rest of the talk. But before turning to the details of this case, let me emphasize that our proposal here is again consistent with the emergent string conjecture. At infinities of the complex structure moduli space as well, the theory either decompactifies or reduces to uh, a weakly coupled string theory. <clears throat> so uh, focusing on the brain moduli, uh, I will provide three pieces of evidence for the decompactification picture. Uh, the first argument is based on a local monodromy analysis. And uh, being a local analysis, uh, it will serve only as a necessary condition for the loop extension. On the other hand, the second argument is uh, based on a global via stress analysis, providing an e explicit global realization of the loop extension uh, via uh, tunings of the via stress coefficients. And finally, the last argument uh, relies on, on duality to heterotic string frame. And this way, our interpretation of the loop extension as a decompactification phenomenon will hopefully be made more convincing to you. Specifically, I will, I will illustrate uh, how it goes for the E7 times E8 gauge group, and then, and then after that, I will conclude. So let's start from the monodromy. Firstly, a very quick reminder of the monodromy notion in eight dimensional F theory. Um, type 2B string theory has not only a fundamental string, but also a D string, and in general, a PQ string. So this letter PQ string uh, can end on PQ7 brains, uh, which I will denote as XPQ. And associated to XPQ uh, is an SL2Z monodromy action, uh, uh, which I write here as MPQ. And this turns an RS string to M times RS. So a string can encircle the, the, the seven brain without generating any junction, only if its PQ charge is an eigenvector of this monodromy action. Now, it is known that certain brains may coalesce at finite distance in the, in the brain moduli space, leading to uh, gauge algebra enhancements to ADE uh, uh, algebras. And listed here are the brain configurations for these enhancements where A, B, and C here uh, denote these XPQ uh, ch uh, char PQ charges of these seven brains. <clears throat> um, on the other hand, today we are interested in brain collisions at infinite distance. So the monodromy analysis by, by, by DeWolf et al. Uh, uh, tells us that a rank one uh, uh, loop extension can happen if uh, X 3,1 collides with uh, EN, uh, leading to an EN hat algebra. Then for the combined EN hat monodromy action, uh, 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 the eigenvector delta here uh, is the fundamental string. So we can imagine uh, BPS particles coming from the string winding, which become massless when the uh, EN and the X3,1 brains uh, coalesce. And here this eigencharge delta plays the role of an imaginary root of the affine extension. We also learned that a, a rank two loop enhancement may also happen. And uh, what becomes relevant for us is uh, uh, the double extension from E8 to uh, E9 hat. Uh, in this case, we end up with two imaginary roots, delta one and delta two, uh, and uh, 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 these will play a. Uh, this will show some some different physics uh, compared with the rank one extension. So, what is indeed the physics then? Uh, because each such imaginary root leads to a BPS winding tower at infinities in brain moduli where a loop ex extension uh, happens, a light KK tower must arise. And our claim is that in the rank one extension case, uh, uh, the theory decompactifies to nine dimensions because there is a single KK tower, while the rank two case, uh, uh, it decompactifies fully to 10 dimensions via two KK towers. So having looked into the local monodromies, we should next ask uh, if these loop extensions are actually realizable in a global setup as well. 
And it turns out that we can indeed achieve them as explicit bias trust models on P1. To see that, let's first recall a, a bias trust model is defined by F and G, uh, which are respectively degree eight and degree 12 polynomials in the base coordinates S and T. <coughs> Uh, and the discriminant delta uh, defined as 4FQ plus 27G square, uh, 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 this, this, this of course shows the uh, locations of the seven brains because the vanishing of uh, this discriminant uh, indicates the generation degenerate fiber and, and in turn the uh, seven brains sitting there. <clears throat> and in this language, the ADE algebras are described by the vanishing orders now of F, G, and delta, which is essentially the, the, the classic uh, Kodaira neuron classification result of, of codimension one singular fibers. And famously, there can also be the so-called no minimal fibers at, at, at orders beyond 4, 6, 12. And the loop algebras E and hats uh, turn out to be examples uh, of such no minimal fibers. <clears throat> Uh, in presence of such non-minimal fibers, uh, to be able to come up with a Calabria resolution, one needs to uh, blow up in the base, as explained nicely in this paper, for example. And as a result of such base blow-ups, uh, the base decomposes into a union of P1s. Then consequently, the degenerate K3 uh, decomposes into a union of surfaces. And this is uh, what Kulikov model is all about, uh, roughly speaking. So, uh, Kulikov models classify degenerations of K3 to a union of component surfaces VIs. Uh, for infinite distance degenerations, there can be uh, just two types called type two and type three, for which the component surfaces intersect respectively at an elliptic curve and at a rational curve. So the picture here uh, depicts uh, a Kulikov type two model. Then we find that the rank one uh, loop extension is Kulikov type three with a single S1 decompactification. And similarly, the rank two extension uh, 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 is Kulikov type two with two S1s opening up. <clears throat> so uh, to be concrete, let me give an explicit uh, realization for an E7 times E8 configuration. Suppose that we only turn on these five uh, via stress coefficients A through E here at generic values though, then at t equals zero, uh, you read the vanishing orders of fg, which is three and five, so three, five, nine. And this indicates E7 fiber at t equals zero. And similarly, at s equals zero, it's four, five, and 10, uh, indicating an E8 fiber. And these two uh, algebras amount to nine plus 10, uh, seven brains in total. And because delta is a degree 24 polynomial, we are still missing five, seven brains, and they are going to be scattered randomly uh, uh, in the P1 base because uh, the coefficients here are generic. <clears throat> uh, now let's tune the virus stress coefficients via a small parameter U. Specifically, we will be turning off C and D uh, in this manner with NM positive, but we leave the others generic. Uh, then a no minimal fiber appears at T equals zero because the vanishing orders now alleviate to uh, four and uh, six, and then 12. <clears throat> so as already stated, we now need to blow, uh, blow up the base. Uh, for instance, uh, if we take n equals m equals four, we end up having to blow up four times to get rid of all the non-minimal fibers. And eventually we come up with a type two uh, uh, Kulikov degeneration with, uh, with five configurations as shown in this picture. Uh, and then by further analyzing the brain configuration, we learned that this amounts to uh, E9 hat times E9 hat uh, algebra. Uh, this leads to two BPS towers uh, and in turn to a full decompactification to 10, di 10 dimensions on S1 times S1. And the 10 dimensional non abelian part of the gauge algebra is the Lie part E8 times E8. Okay, uh, let me uh, be a little bit quicker for type three. Uh, so type three degeneration is then uh, realized by additionally tuning the A and the B coefficients. To be precise, uh, we turn off this particular combination. Uh, then uh, going through the uh, required blowups again, we have a type three model. And we learned that 
by analyzing the brain configuration, uh, uh, we, we learn that this amounts to uh, uh, E8 head times E8 head algebra. And this leads to one DPS tower and therefore to a decompactification just to nine dimensions on S1. And finally, maybe in the remaining couple of minutes, uh, uh, I will provide some, some further convincing evidence in case you doubt our, our decompactification interpretation. Now via, via duality to, to heterotic theory on a two torus. So uh, we keep looking at the E7 times E8 example. Uh, we have seen that the Kulikov degenerations of type two and type three arise via this uh, particular set of tunings of the via stress coefficients. And here with K equals zero, A and B are not tuned at all. They are still generic. So this corresponds to type two. And for K positive, A and B are tuned and this corresponds to type three. Now for E7 times E8, the exact duality relationship to the heterotic frame is given in terms of a Ziegel modular forms as nicely explained in this paper. Specifically the Weierstrass coefficients A through E are mapped to these Ziegel forms where the big omega uh, collectively denotes the three heterotic moduli, the complex structure tau, the Keller modulus rho and the Wilson line moduli, modulus z. <clears throat> now we can solve for these uh, uh, heterotic moduli uh, so that they, they can match the, the specific tunings of the F3 setting. Then uh, for type two, it turns out that the Keller modulus rho diverges while the complex structure tau is finite. And this uh, uh, manifests the, the full decompactification to 10 dimensions. On the other hand, for type three, uh, uh, it turns out that both rho and tau uh, diverge at the same rate. And this indeed uh, manifests the partial decompactification to 90 in this heterotic frame. So that's rather explicit check of the decompactification interpretation of, our, uh, 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 of ours in F theory. Uh, so finally, here is one last sanity check. Uh, uh, now we know how to construct nine dimensional F theory EFTs by taking limits in the eight dimensional uh, brain moduli. So uh, we have gone through some, some exercise in nine dimensional F theory defined as such uh, in the limits to classify maximal non-abelian nine dimensional gauge algebras. And we have compared this result with the purely heterotic classification by by, by these authors. And happily enough, the two completely match. And this supports our decompactification proposal for the, at least for the rank one extensions strongly. So uh, I'm, I guess I'm running out of time. So let me just uh, uh, summarize very quickly. So our goal was to, uh, 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 to clarify the nature, the very nature of the light towers that are expected to arise at infinite distance uh, uh, according to the distance conjecture. And as a refinement of this conjecture, we proposed the emergent string conjecture, which characterized the, uh, the physically characterized the, the nature of this tower. And this has been confirmed both in the Keller moduli and in the brain moduli in the F3 setup. So that's what I wanted to uh, convey to you today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Xiongju. Uh, and if there are some questions, maybe we can take one or two. Can I ask something? Yeah, Andre. Um, so when it decompactifies to 10 dimensions, there aren't many choices what it can decompactify into. Is it, is it just to be? Um, um, okay, good question. So oh, okay, good question. So I, I it should be, I think it should be heterotic. Uh -huh. So we um, first of all, this has the heterotic dual, and uh, for type 2b, it should be having 32 supercharges, but mm. we only have 16, so I think it should be heterotic. And so just sort of conceptually, the extra light states that you're getting, they're coming from the gauge sector, as I understand it. And if it is to decompactify to some higher dimensional gravity theory, I would expect Kaluza Klein modes from both the gravity and the gauge sector. So how, how does that how does that play together? I mean, where where do the where do the gravity and Kaluza clan modes come from? So these these light states are coming from the uh, strings wrapping this uh, uh, small one cycle in the base, mm -hmm. right? So 
So for example, this can combine with the, uh, 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 the light gauge modes uh, in the AD context by you know, just joining these uh, uh, additional one cycles, right? So for example, for the gauge modes, uh, from the starting from the AD, you, you have lots of uh, one cycles that give rise to the roots of the gauge algebra mm -hmm. from the A theory. This mm -hmm. is also coming from the one cycles wrapped by strings, right? Mm -hmm. And we are just adding some additional circles in, in case X3, one collides also with the existing gauge, gauge configuration. Mm -hmm. So this is just adding uh, uh, um, additional wrapping of additional strings. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what, what was the... What I, I was, because it's all seemed to be coming from the gauge sector, I was confused if, if it decompactifies, it needs sort of gravity Kaluza Klein nodes, right? If you go from 10 to eight dimensions, there'll be gravity Kaluza Klein nodes. Where do they come from? Right. So, okay. So, from the heterotic context of a torus, then this is indeed a geometry, geometrical decompactification. But now, from the type 2B context, what I'm saying is that we obtain some light tower, which is KK-like, mm -hmm. of which has a completely different nature from the type 2B context. However, from the effective field theory point of view, this is still uh, some KK-like tower with mass spectrum to be n times some m0. Yeah, so, but I, I'm more concerned about the spins of, of, the, of the, the particles in that tower. Spins? Um, I mean, why, why aren't they just gauge field towers and why, why would they have gravity Kaluza Klein nodes? Uh, so I guess um, to any state, you could add this, um, this, uh, this additional, additional string winding. Um, so for any, any states in, exist, that exist in the AT, uh, you could add these additional string winding modes to, mm. to to, to, to enhance this to a full Kaluza Klein tower for any states in AD. But maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, okay, but never mind. It's, we can discuss it offline. Okay, yeah, okay, thanks.